Since her introduction in 2009, Poppy Parker has grown to become the sweetheart of an ever-growing legion of fans, who adore her sweet groovy look, and versatility. New York is a two-hour plane ride from the Midwest, but for 1960s teenager Poppy Parker, it might as well be in a different universe. She has traded hanging at the local malt shop, and school dances, for the glamorous life of a teenage fashion model in the Big Apple. Poppy has landed in New York. She nervously takes a seat in her first taxicab. During the long drive into the city, she wonders what life as a teen fashion model will be like. There are so many new things to discover about her newly adopted city. The magic of New York, from its wonderful shopping districts, art galleries, landmarks and parks, to its bohemian downtown, is unparalleled, and Poppy wants to experience it all. Get ready New York, she's arrived. Will the city that never sleeps ever be the same again? Poppy Parker is a 12 and a half inch tall articulated vinyl fashion doll with fully rooted hair. The doll has a custom facial sculpt with a molded eyelash ridge. She has the fashion royalty Nippon Misaki body, with articulated wrists and ankles and removable hands for easy dressing. Poppy Parker and New York City go hand in hand. Ever since her arrival to start her modeling career, Poppy has fallen in love with her new hometown. Whether it's taking in the tourist locations, poetry readings, attending debutante balls, or new modeling assignments around the city, Poppy is becoming New York City sweetheart. Everyone wanted a little Poppy Parker star power on their side, knowing full well that everything the teen idol touched turned into an immediate success. Poppy definitely had the world at her feet. The mod era began as a subculture in London and spread throughout Great Britain and elsewhere, eventually influencing fashions and trends in other countries, and continues today on a smaller scale. Focused on music and fashion, the look has its roots in a small group of stylish London-based young men in the late 1950s who were termed modernists because they listened to modern jazz. Elements of mod include fashion, often tailor-made suits, music, including soul, rhythm and blues, ska, and jazz, and motor scooters usually made by Lambretta or Vespa. By 1965 the mods increasingly gravitated towards pop art and psychedelia. London became synonymous with fashion, music, and pop culture in these years, a period often referred to as swinging London. During this time, mod fashion spread to other countries and became popular in the United States and elsewhere, with mod now viewed less as an isolated subculture, but emblematic of the larger youth culture of the era. This period, portrayed by Alberto Sordi's movie, Thank you very much, and in Michelangelo Antonioni's 1966 film, Blow Up, was typified by pop art, Carnaby Street boutiques, live music, and discotheques. Many associate this era with fashion model twiggy, miniskirts, and bold geometrical patterns on brightly colored clothes. American musicians, in the wake of the British invasion, adopted the look of mod clothes, longer hairstyles, and beetle boots. The exploitation documentary, Mondo Mod, provides a glimpse at Mod's influence on the Sunset Strip and West Hollywood scene of late 1966. Mod increasingly became associated with psychedelic rock and the early hippie movement. Its trappings were reflected on popular American TV shows such as Laugh-In and The Mod Squad. Male mods adopted a smooth, sophisticated look that included tailor-made suits with narrow lapels, wool or cashmere sweaters in crew neck or v-neck, Chelsea boots, loafers, and hairstyles that imitated the look of French, nouvelle vague film actors. A few male mods went against gender norms by using makeup. Mods chose scooters over motorbikes partly because they were a symbol of Italian style, and because their body panels concealed moving parts and made them less likely to stain clothes with oil or road dust. Many female mods dressed androgynously, with short haircuts, men's trousers or shirts, flat shoes, and little makeup, often just pale foundation, brown eyeshadow, white or pale lipstick, and false eyelashes. Miniskirts became progressively shorter between the early and mid-1960s, as female mod fashion became more mainstream, slender models like Jean Shrimpton and Twiggy, began to exemplify the mod look. 
Maverick fashion designers emerged, such as Mary Kwan, who was known for her miniskirt designs. The television program, Ready Steady Go, helped spread awareness of mod fashions to a larger audience. Mod culture continues to influence fashion to this day. While America was conquering space and planting a flag on the moon, Britain was busy inventing the miniskirt. In fact, the 60s were a period of great innovation in the United Kingdom. Mary Quant was one of the fashion leaders of the time. She transformed the way women dressed, with her ethos of bright graphic prints, bold lines, and a sophistication that belied an apparent simplicity of execution. As Quant memorably said, fashion is not frivolous. She caused a design revolution with her energy, flair, and rebellion. She brought this energy to bear on her clothing and packaging. Mary Quant, a powerful role model for women, personified the energy and fun of swinging London. She challenged conventions and popularized the miniskirt, colorful tights, and tailored trousers, igniting a new age of feminism. The miniskirt became a symbol of the era, sparking a new creative scene in London and beyond. Quant's tiny boutique grew into a wholesale brand available in department stores across the UK. Her success soon hit America, where her designs were made for chain stores and mail order companies inspiring young women to rebel against traditional dress worn by their mothers and grandmothers. Poppy Parker is Sabrina Fairchild. Along with other wealthy families of Long Island, the Larrabees have a chauffeur, Fairchild, who has a daughter, Sabrina. She's in love with the Larrabee's youngest son David, and has been for all of her life. Unfortunately, he doesn't know she's alive. Heartbroken, she reluctantly moves to Paris to attend cookery school, where she befriends a wealthy baron, who opens the world to her, and with whom she learns the finer things in life. Upon her return to Long Island, Sabrina, now a sophisticate, is ready to take on both the world and David. Things are about to change for Sabrina more than she could have ever dreamed. Poppy Parker and Barefoot in the Park Based on Neil Simon's 1963 play of the same title, it focuses on newlyweds Corey and Paul Bratter and their adventures living in a minuscule sixth-floor walk-up apartment in a Greenwich Village brownstone. Stuffed shirt Paul is a hard-working young attorney just starting his practice, while spontaneous bride Corey is determined to create a romantic environment in one room, with no heat, a hole in the skylight, and oddball neighbors. The title refers to Paul's becoming drunk, throwing caution to the wind and running barefoot in the park in Washington Square, in response to his wife's repeated complaints about his sober and cautious demeanor. The 1965 New York World's Fair was conceived by a group of the city's businessmen who remembered their childhood experiences at the 1939 New York Fair. The fair held over 140 pavilions and 110 restaurants for 80 nations. Hailing itself as a universal and international exposition, the fair's theme was peace through understanding, symbolized by a 12-story high stainless steel model of the earth called the Unisphere. The fair was a showcase of mid-20th century American culture and technology. It remains a touchstone for many American baby boomers who visited the optimistic exposition as children. It might be viewed as a grand consumer show, covering many products produced in America at the time, for transportation, living, and consumer electronic needs, in a way that would never be repeated at future World's Fairs in North America. This fair gave many attendees their first interaction with computer equipment, in an era when these products were kept in back offices, away from the public. Many of the pavilions were built in the mid-century modern manner, a futurist architectural style influenced by car culture, jet aircraft, and the space age, which were all on display at the fair. By contrast, some of the smaller international pavilions were built in more traditional styles, such as a Chinese temple or a Swiss chalet. Hemlines were just above the knee in 1961, and gradually climbed upward over the next few years. 
By 1966, some designs had the hem at the upper thigh. Stockings with garters were not considered practical with miniskirts, and were replaced with colored tights. The popular acceptance of miniskirts peaked in the swinging London of the 1960s, and has continued to be commonplace, particularly among younger women and teenage girls. Before that time, short skirts were only seen in sport and dance clothing, such as skirts worn by female tennis players, figure skaters, cheerleaders, and dancers. Discover the world of Poppy Parker, Integrity Toys' fastest rising star. For 2014, Poppy and her chums appeared as secret agents. The spy theme was a supremely popular storyline in the 1960s, both on TV and at the movies. Poppy Parker is Lot to Danger, the girl from Integrity. Slinking her way through the secret headquarters of Havoc, Agent Danger is ready for action in her black stretch satin cat suit. She makes a formidable opponent. Many of the shows and movies were a direct response to the hugely successful James Bond franchise, introducing their own particular spin on the genre. Humor was usually part of the mix, some series such as Get Smart and I Spy were played entirely for laughs. Look out for the visual gags we've introduced into Poppy's own spy series. As a clue, this channel is a firearms free zone. A clear influence on these spy dolls is Emma Peel from The Avengers, channeling Diana Riggs' character's penchant for leather cat suits. The name of Integrity series is clearly a riff on both the man and the girl from UNCLE. These cult TV series combined high fashion with a mix of pulp fiction and parody. In the case of the girl from Integrity, Fashion clearly rules. The dolls run the full gamut of mid-60s fashion from the slightly kinky, through the pop era mini dress, to drop-dead glamorous evening wear, ideal for the casinos of Monte Carlo. We were given a change of gear with the pure elegance of two evening ensembles, that holiday feeling, and joyous celebration, the fifth anniversary poppy doll. The joyous celebration gown is modeled on a fancy dress, made for the Japanese market, by Mattel in 1967. Interestingly enough, the brocade was used inside out for the vintage fancy dress, which used the same fabric, right side out, as for Barbie's earlier Golden Girl, and evening splendor outfits. The gloss convention took us right back to 1960s cutting-edge fashion, with not a little disco glitter thrown in. The term disco is an abbreviation of discotheque, which is actually a French word meaning a library of phonograph records. Discotheque became used in French for a type of nightclub in Paris, where, in the absence of live music, they resorted to playing records during the Nazi occupation, in the early 1940s. In 1960, the word was first used in an English magazine, to describe a Parisian nightclub. In the summer of 1964, a short sleeveless dress called a discotheque dress was popular in the United States. The earliest known use for the word in abbreviated form, disco, described this dress in the Salt Lake Tribune. The Poppy Parker 5th Anniversary Collection appeared at the IFDC convention, in 2014. Evening glam was once again to the fore. The dolls even featured elegant high-heeled feet, as opposed to the articulated ankles generally used for Poppy. This collection brought together three distinct evening ensembles, a knee-length aqua cocktail suit, the classic mermaid gown and coral, overlaid with black net, and a full-on big skirted prom number in glittery lilac.
Poppy Parker is on cloud 9. She has just taken on a new assignment as model spokesperson for IT Airways, the grooviest ride in the sky. Poppy will be featured as the lead air hostess, in print and TV commercials, for the company whose motto is, flying with us is always in fashion. Poppy takes the modeling world by storm as she sets out to find the agency that will take her career to new and exciting places. Of course, Poppy has her handy blue portfolio, ready to hand out her best portraits. Looking totally scrumptious, Poppy models a blue floral chiffon maxi dress, with a matching ribbon choker, and shoes, silver hoop earrings, and silver bangle bracelets. In perhaps her most avant-garde gig so far, Poppy wears a bold lime green jumpsuit, with silver sequin overlay, and a dramatic lime green chiffon Watteau train, not to mention an astonishing hairdo. Poppy's fabulous friend Darla returns, looking more smashing than ever in her red velvet mini dress. Famous British fashion photographer Nigel North is known to be a ladies' man. Will he seduce Poppy with his charming hot looks? Nigel is ready to snap a prize-winning beauty shot of our favorite model. Poppy shows her solid gold side, ready to go-go dance, and sing the night away in her sequin mini dress. She can show off her talent with the gold tone microphone and stand. Poppy's romantic wedding dress was so stunning, Nigel almost proposed at the shoot. Poppy looks delicious in a white satin dress with dotted tulle overlay, and a tulle bridal veil with large bow detail. The delicate wedding bouquet, and a lovely wedding ring, complete the look. No self-respecting 60s modeling assignment would be complete without a futuristic look. Poppy looks out of this world in a silver faux leather mini dress. This stellar look is completed with large silver triangle earrings, silver tone mod sunglasses, and over-the-knee silver boots. The Mood Changers gift set featured Integrity Toys Quick Switch System, to create three completely different looks, and not one, not two, but three different heads that allow Poppy to transform like never before. Moving seamlessly into the hippie era, Poppy wears a black and white polka dot mock tied blouse, large yellow straw hat, hot pink faux fur vest, white cropped bell bottoms with mod floral belt, and black ankle boots. But when she's done with her hippie chic assignment, Poppy changes into a black and charcoal floral sequin mini dress. As Poppy's fame in the modeling world rises to new heights, she has decided to make a bold move to Bellini Models, the hippest modeling agency in the world. Poppy is ready to rule the model scene. A vibrant striped chiffon mini dress is perfect to launch her change to Bellini. Poppy prepares to take New York by storm once more. The cinematic convention, as shown on the widescreen, in full glorious technical. Poppy is right at home in the Valley of the Dolls for her cinematic premiere. Working some classic looks from the late 1960s, Poppy Parker is every inch the movie star. She's definitely ready for her close-up Mr. DeMille. Chip Farnsworth III doesn't look too bad either. For the Bon Bon collection, Poppy Parker arrives in the City of Lights. At the airport in Paris, Poppy is greeted by her French chaperone. Bonjour Mademoiselle, are the first words Poppy hears and she is delighted to make her first acquaintance in France. Poppy's travel ensemble includes a seafoam sheath dress, and a black and white houndstooth coat, with matching beret. She carries a travel case, given to her by her grandmother. Poppy spends her first day in Paris shopping, at all of the boutiques on the Champs-Élysées, with her model friends. There is so much to see. She decides to wear a smart yellow suit, with black accent belt, topped off with a dramatic flocked hat. Perfect for a wonderful day shopping. It's springtime in Paris, and Poppy is in love, with a poodle named Phoebe. Today they are walking through the Jardin des Tuileries, where Poppy can gather her thoughts and take in the beauty of the flowers. The modeling agency has invited all the American models to the Palais Garnier, for a night at the ballet. 
what to wear. Poppy decides on a turquoise brocade cocktail dress, with a tulip skirt and coordinating jewelry. She throws on a fur wrap, grabs her matching clutch, tucks her tickets inside, and she's out the door. Jean-Pierre Jordan is the most popular couturier in Paris. Poppy was chosen to model a stunning creation in his latest fashion show. This strapless white brocade gown has a contrasting Obi-style waistband, and long dramatic train, in lilac. A matching clutch bag, shoes, and long white opera gloves, tie together a couture ensemble that is truly magnifique. For Poppy's first night in Paris there was a party in honor of the visiting Americans. As a gift, each model was given a Paris original to wear to the event. Poppy received a black and white polka dotted cocktail dress, with black gloves, finished with a black tulle spectator headpiece, brought from home. What could be more French than polka dots in Paris? On a quiet night back at the hotel, a girl likes to collect her thoughts in her diary. They are kept private behind a lock and key. Only Poppy and her teddy bear, Plato Parker, know where she keeps it. At Lemieux, her favorite boutique, Poppy found the lavish baby blue peignoir set, that she wears this evening, perfect as a Parisian dream. The most exciting modeling experience of Poppy's life was for the fragrance company Amour. She represented the face of the brand as Miss Amour. Poppy received an ensemble, created by the talented Jean-Pierre Jordan to wear in the photo, a frothy ball gown of gathered pale pink tulle. Poppy is sure to make everyone fall in love with Miss Amour. As Poppy Parker explores the city of lights, she has everything she needs to go easily from day to night and back. The gift set, Ooh La La, was designed to give fans tons of possibilities with many mix and match combos. Stylish Parisian separates, colorful bracelets and silver hoop earrings, a bold printed tote, a pair of authentic cork wedgies, and bright red slingback shoes, were all packaged in a gorgeous window box gift set. Poppy Parker on the cover of her very own record. A little uncertain of her ability to sing in French at first, Poppy discovered that she's a natural. Nothing is easier when you have the best jazz band in Paris as backing. Her sweet and coquettish look, which bears more than a nod in the direction of Brigitte Bardot, consists of a perfectly fitted pale pink micro-checkered dress, with a white ruched chiffon detail at the bust. She wears black patent kitten heels, a bracelet, earrings, and has a miniature vinyl record. This little flower is ready to steal the hearts of her new adoring fans. To celebrate the end of her Bon Bon tour, one of the top champagne makers of France, Christophe Pomerin, named a special vintage in Poppy's honor, the special edition Miss Poppy Parker. Although we think of supermodels as a 1990s phenomenon, way back in 1967, the New York Times referred to Twiggy as a supermodel. So our very own supermodel, Poppy Parker, is in great company. Supermodels became household names, and worldwide recognition is associated with their modeling careers. In 2007 Claudia Schiffer said, in order to become a supermodel, one must be on all the covers, all over the world, at the same time. Dutch-born model, Wilhelmina Cooper, holds the record for most covers on American Vogue, appearing 27 or 28 times throughout the 1950s and 1960s. Lisa Fonsagreves is widely considered to have been the world's first supermodel, with a career that began in the 1930s. She appeared in most of the major fashion and general interest magazines from the 30s to the 50s, including Town & Country, Life, Vogue, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar, and Time. For 2017, Integrity Toys launched the Swinging London Collection. Poppy has arrived in London, and she's so excited to see the debut of her line of clothing, Poppy Gear. She's having fun modeling the new dresses from the collection. Naturally, she'll be the focus of the ad campaign. Poppy Parker takes some time out of her busy schedule to go sightseeing and swinging London. The British press have dubbed her, Popster, and she loves interacting with her fans in public, but it sure would be nice to see Big Ben without all of the blinding flashbulbs going off. Poppy has a makeover on Carnaby Street. She hits some of the most popular London boutiques, like Sign of the Times, and gets her hair and makeup done at the grooviest salon in London. Fresh from her modeling stint in Paris, Poppy knows it's time for a new look. This gift set delivers two fabulous Poppy Parker dolls, showing Poppy on her arrival in London from Paris, and then after her sleek mod transformation. This totally groovy gift set features a fabulously youthful Poppy Parker, with three ultra-colorful mini dresses, three pairs of shoes, and all sorts of mix and match accessories to create many fun looks. Poppy is on location, in a rainy day street fashion photoshoot, for Miss London, a makeup company, 
to promote their new line of lipsticks called Sunny Slickers. Dressed in super vibrant colors, Poppy puts some pop in her step in a mod update on the traditional raincoat. This colorful look brings a ray of light to any dull and dreary day. Wet or dry, she's a star. On a surprise day off, Poppy takes in another day of sightseeing. With her brand new 35mm portable camera, she can snap all of the incredible sights and attractions the city has to offer. Perfectly clad in her super modern pastel tweed suit, Poppy is set to take London by storm. She just wants to see it all and not miss a beat. Poppy was asked to guest star in a few episodes of her favorite British spooky TV series, Misty Hollows. Poppy Parker is dressed perfectly to play the part of the spooked out neighbor in a fashionable Victorian inspired mod dress. Since we couldn't leave our girl in the dark, Poppy has a miniature candle and holder, perfect to shine some light on the mystery surrounding the plot she stars in. When the London Tourism Bureau heard that Poppy Parker was in town, they couldn't wait to ask her to take part in one of the most sensational promo campaigns of the time. Poppy Parker is ready for her British invasion in a super cute Union Jack mini dress. With her fiery red hair, ultra-mod leather scooter coat, Bobby's hat, and white knee-high laced boots, Poppy is ready to lead the march to London's most fashionable spots. Poppy has a matching jewelry set, a purse, and three souvenir pillows from the photo shoot, so she can make her brand new egg chair pop with color. Poppy outshines the top British stars and celebrities at one of London's poshest clubs, where the entire who's who of the time would go to be seen. She wears a stylish knee-length satin overcoat, over a perfectly tailored little black dress. With her sleek hair styled in a swanky braided ponytail, and the rest of her look accessorized to perfection, she fits right in, with the British glitterati. As part of her stint in London, Poppy was invited to perform top hits from Bon Bon, her French album, on British TV. For the appearances, she handpicked the absolute grooviest looks. Everyone remembers her TV performances fondly even today, as the videos are still being shared all over the world, several generations later. This gift set includes two complete outfits, a guitar, jewelry and two pairs of shoes, everything Poppy needed for her costume changes. Straight off the set of an Agatha Christie whodunit, and channeling Miss Marple, Poppy is dressed in a plaid ensemble, of short cape, skirt and matching beret. This intrepid look is completed with a turtleneck shirt, fishnet stockings and tall blue boots. The doll has a necklace, a pair of painted on gloved hands, a purse and earrings. Taking some inspiration from vintage Francie's wild bunch outfit, this colorful psychedelic getup consists of a tiger print mini dress under a bright pink fur coat, with shoes, handbag, and jewelry to complete the look. Poppy's hair is truly mod, trimmed in a short, sleek bob. Poppy Parker's London trip is coming to an end. Her friends at the modeling agency invited her to a holiday party to ring in the new year ahead. Poppy decided to go gold, and she's glad that she did, the fabulous tree that decorated the hall felt like it was just waiting for her to arrive. Our favorite teenage model wears a slim fit floor length, white and gold gown, complemented by long triangular chandelier earrings, that perfectly match the pyramid pattern on her dress. Poppy also comes with elegant open toe heels, three bracelets, a golden clutch purse, and three holiday gift boxes for her friends. Colloquially, the term fairy tale or fairy story can also mean any far-fetched story or tall tale. It is used especially of any story that not only is not necessarily true, it can also be fantastic, in the fantasy meaning of the word. Fantastic really does apply to the Poppy Parker dolls that appeared at the Fashion Fairy Tale Convention in 2017. Haute couture versions of well-loved storybook characters were created, including Snow White, Dorothy Gale from The Wizard of Oz, Tinkerbell, Red Riding Hood, and even a fairy godmother. For good measure, the collection was rounded out with two high fashion outfits, Your Move, and Clueless. Of course, the fairy tale romance of the convention had the traditional happy ending. Soda Pop Saturday has a definite Kate Spade vibe, as well as harking back to Poppy's earlier life in the Midwest, before she traded hanging at the local malt shop for the glamorous life of a teenage fashion model in the Big Apple. The City Sweethearts capsule collection introduced us to a beatnik poppy. The beatniks were media stereotypes going back as far as late 1940s, through the 50s to mid-1960s. 
The trope was used to indicate the more superficial aspects of the beat generation literary movement, of the late 40s to mid 50s. Elements of this beatnik personification included pseudo intellectualism, drug use, and a cartoonish depiction of real life people, along with a spiritual quest of Jack Kerouac's autobiographical fiction. Five distinct moods were captured in the City Sweethearts collection. In addition to beatnik and intellectual, this capsule edition included a little quality shopping at Lord and Style, in a lavender tailored suit with bold contrast stripe detail. Naturally, a signature shopping bag was part of the look. A vision in peach was the ball gown entry to the collection. Just how many shades of peach can one doll wear? Poppy certainly shows us, in this lavish ensemble, offset with demure pearl jewelry. Finally, Darla Daly makes a reappearance, in a two-doll daywear gift set. Vibrant modern prints combine with pops of color in a head-turning combo. There's even a graphic kitty print tote bag included. Next we head off to Milan, for the Italian doll convention. Billed as the convention that goes to Cartoonia, Poppy Parker's appearance certainly lives up to expectations. Chow Poppy was available in both pale blonde, and bubblegum pink, hair colors. Her schoolgirl with a twist outfit was a saucy reimagining of the traditional school uniform, with pop art color combos you'd never expect to see in the classroom. She even appears in cartoon form on her own Chow Poppy shopping bag. In case there was a little time to relax at the Lido, convention goers received a coordinating skirted bikini, ideal to pair with the red cat eye sunglasses. It's the summer of love, and Poppy Parker has a hippie moment. The hippies were part of the counterculture of the 1960s, originally a youth movement that began in the United States during the mid-60s. The word hippie came from hipster, and was used to describe beatniks who moved into New York City's Greenwich Village, San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury District, and Chicago's Old Town Community. The term hippie was used in print by San Francisco writer Michael Fallon, helping popularize use of the term in the media. The origins of the term hip is uncertain. By the 1940s, it had become part of African-American jive slang, and meant sophisticated, currently fashionable, or absolutely up-to-date. The beatniks adopted the term, and early hippies inherited the language and countercultural values of the beat generation. Hippies created their own communities, listened to psychedelic music, embraced the sexual revolution, and many used drugs such as marijuana, and LSD, to explore altered states of consciousness. Hippie fashion and values had a major effect on culture, influencing popular music, television, film, literature, and the arts. Since the 1960s, mainstream society has assimilated many aspects of hippie culture. The religious and cultural diversity the hippies espoused has gained widespread acceptance, and their pop versions of Eastern philosophy, and Asian spiritual concepts, have reached a larger group. The peace symbol, which became associated with the hippie culture, was originally designed for the British nuclear disarmament movement, in 1958. The V-hand sign was widely adopted by the counterculture as a symbol of peace, and still today in the United States, it is known as the peace sign. For a complete change of style, Poppy Parker appeared in the Lux Life convention that took place in Portland, Oregon, in 2018. The ensembles for Lux Life were as if the 1960s had been re-envisioned with a modern eye. Metallics were to the fore, combined with a monochromatic palette for each outfit, to give a real sense of luxury.
one color did not mean boring. However, this was not a collection for the faint-hearted. Both acid yellow and hot pink were present, as well as the more traditional off-whites, beiges, and grays, perhaps more commonly associated with the luxurious image. At the Lux Life convention, Poppy Parker appeared as a style lab build a doll concept. Convention attendees received a selection of body parts and outfit pieces with style lab purchases. The complete set allowed the lucky recipients to assemble a brand new Poppy doll, wearing a bold graphic spatter pattern top with train and bondage style ballet flats. A bold fusion of the 60s with today's cutting edge look. The modern yet 1960s vibe continued with Split Decision, a doll duo featuring two quite distinctive looks for Poppy Parker, and more metallics in combination with Lux fabrics. Twenty eighteen ended with the spectacular gift set, looks a plenty. Three head and shoulders busts of Poppy were included, with one body, plus the option of an additional two pack body upgrade. With a trio of distinctive hair colors, bright auburn red, a wild azure blue, and natural blonde, this was a truly versatile gift set that allowed Poppy Parker to transform into three quite different looks. As an added bonus, both the high-heeled arched feet and the flexible ankle foot were in this set, for even more play opportunities. Agents Poppy Parker and Tina Tanaka are posing as groovy cabin crew, on Rio Air Flight 691. They are set for an unforgettable adventure. Following secret instructions, they meet with the mysterious Sergio Silva, a handsome foreign agent, posing deep undercover as a saxophone player, in one of Rio's hip and happening nightclubs. To the tune of the hottest bossa nova beats of the time, our leading ladies soon discover an ally in Sergio, the eponymous man of mystery. Can the Mission Brazil assignment get any hotter? Soon after landing, Poppy Parker went for a walk on the beach, trying to spot her assignment, amongst hundreds of young, gorgeous beachgoers, to the tune of a really famous bossa nova song. It doesn't take long for everyone to realize that Poppy Parker really is the girl from Ipanema. While attending a soiree at the Canadian Embassy in Rio, our girl Poppy spots the evil duo, Sabina and Sebastian Havoc, the masterminds behind the love bomb, a powerful weapon that could topple governments all over the world. She alerts Sergio and Tina, who move in on her position with the local police. A crazy chase in the streets of Rio ensues, and the Havocs are finally put away for good. As the story opens, Poppy Parker, in her role as Special Agent Lata Danger, is on stage singing possibly the most memorable version of the girl from Ipanema in the history of Bossa Nova. As she steps down from her set, to thunderous applause, she signals her local contacts, the time for the secret rendezvous is now. The final scene of the movie unveils a gorgeous sunset over Rio de Janeiro, as Poppy and Sergio kiss passionately. But is this really the end? 
Since her introduction in 2009, Poppy Parker has grown to become the sweetheart of an ever-growing legion of fans, who adore her sweet, groovy look and versatility. To celebrate our girl's 10th anniversary, as the most fashionable teenage model of the swinging 60s, Midnight Decadence was designed just for the occasion, by Poppy Parker's creator, and Integrity Toys designer, David Buttry. Poppy Parker is ready for a star-filled evening we'll all remember for years to come. Congratulations Poppy, here's to another decade. When you are the most famous teen models in America, what better than a little friendly competition to keep you on your toes? Which friend will get the guy? Which gal will be the homecoming queen? Who will land the cover of Miss Teen? To outsiders looking in, their rivalry is the stuff of legends, but in reality, for best friends Poppy Parker and Ginger Gilroy, it's all a game and it's all in good fun. The 2019 Integrity Toys Live from Fashion Week Convention, or FW19, was held in Baltimore. The theme was firmly focused on fashion, with the added bonus of celebrating Poppy Parker's 10th anniversary. In keeping with the runway shows of the top fashion houses, every piece in the collection was inspired by spring, resort, summer, fall, or winter. The convention's FW19 style lab offerings were another opportunity to honor Poppy at 10. The She's a Real Doll collection was based on the idea that at the height of her modeling career, Teen sensation Poppy Parker was approached by a famous toy maker, to create a highly prized fashion doll, based on some of her most famous looks from the 1960s. A toy that every little boy and girl in the world could dream about. So, Miss Parker appeared in six doll-sized guises, kicky, groovy, keen, cool, fab, and far out together with a range of fashion outfits to mix and match.
Hello New York. We're better to start a worldwide modeling tour, than on your adopted home turf. Always the New Yorker at heart, Poppy could feel the electricity in the air. She just finished shooting her last magazine cover, a few minutes before rushing off to John F. Kennedy Airport, to embark on her modeling trip around the world. Smile for the camera Poppy. We love you Poppy, clamored reporters and cheering fans, who surprised her at the gate. With a few mysterious smiles, and a quick wink of her beautiful eye, she disappeared down the walkway, all set for her next thrilling adventure. Tokyo Twilight For the first stop in her fabulous journey around the globe, Poppy lands in Tokyo, her heart filled with anticipation. She is greeted by representatives of the famous Japanese fashion brand, Nikko, who hired the teenage superstar as the lead model for their highly anticipated campaign, promoting their new line, Clone. This adventure will also take her to Osaka, to shoot part of the campaign at the 1970 Japan World's Fair. What a trip! Mad for Milan A little bit of work, mixed with a lot of fun, is how Poppy is spending her time in Milan. After checking out some of the new fashion collections, Poppy enjoys Milan's famous shopping, and its architecture. It feels like her second home. She's mad for Milan. Sizzling in Paris When the Maison de la Haute Couture de Paris calls, and invites you to be the guest of honor at the most important fashion gale of the season, a gal just can't say no. Moments before she boarded her flight to the City of Lights, one of Paris' top stylists called, and told her that he would be honored to take care of her various looks for the evening. Everything on the house. Nothing but the best for Miss Poppy. Ooh la la. Outback Walkabout Invited to go on a personalized guided tour, of some of the most remote regions of the Australian outback, by the Ministry of Tourism, to help promote travel in this remote part of the globe, our girl Poppy Parker could not have been more delighted to have finally landed in Sydney. Looking fabulous as she is greeted by the local press, as they say down under, no worries mate, she'll be right. Enlightened in India On her way to complete her incredible world tour, Poppy Parker's travels take her to Mumbai, where she and her friends meet with famous celebrity yogi, Mahara Mahir, to discuss the finer points of philosophy and spirituality. A highly publicized piece of 1960s history, that fateful meeting started a trend that contributed to the birth of the peace and love movement across the world. Undercover Angel as the love affair between Poppy Parker and her fans grew well into the 1970s, Miss Parker's career naturally morphed from teenage model to TV superstar. Her incredible screen presence made her a household name, as she became the queen of primetime TV. As the decade moved along, our star was cast in a revolutionary and glamorous new primetime drama, that would become one of those breakthrough career-defining moments. Poppy Parker broke new boundaries as an undercover angel. Her powerful performance left an undeniable mark on television history, one that her adoring fans still rave about some 50 years later. Pretty Bird Poppy Parker has landed in London. She's only here for a few days, as she shoots a fashion magazine editorial for British designer, Queenie Court. Known for her young and kicky designs, Queenie is at the top of her game, and every young Brit wants to wear her clothing. Now she wants to introduce her brand across the pond. Poppy is the perfect choice to model this collection, inspired by British schoolgirls. Viva Poppy! A gal can't visit Las Vegas without spending a day relaxing by the pool. What better place to see and be seen than the luxurious courtyard of the Starduster Hotel and Casino? Dressed for a day about town, and a trippy evening at the go-go room, Poppy Parker has everything she needs to go from day to night, and not miss a single beat. Lady Luck Invited to guest star in one of the most talked about musical reviews in Las Vegas, Poppy is all dolled up for her romantic moment in the show. Will her lucky charms bring fortune to the Starduster, the most glamorous resort on the Strip? The odds are high. 
Kiss in the Shadows. All work and no play makes Poppy a dull gal. The moment the show ended, after a quick trip to her dressing room, Miss Parker is ready for a glamour-filled evening about town. Dressed to have fun with her celebrity friends, Poppy rushes out of the Starduster, just in time to catch a cab and make it to the final performance of her favorite crooner, Francisco Sinatrosi. Masquerade Magic It was all feathers, flash and sizzle. Poppy Parker sparkled as she performed her Masquerade Magic number, and her fans immediately fell under the spell. Ginger and Cinnamon, Holiday at Home Ginger Gilroy celebrates the holiday season relaxing at home, listening to holiday classics, while sipping hot cocoa with her best friend Cinnamon. Poppy Parker's frenemy, Ginger, has got it all figured out for a cold winter's night. Anniversary Kiss. It's a special occasion, and Poppy Parker, everyone's favorite teenage fashion model, blows an anniversary kiss to designer Jason Wu, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of his collaboration with Integrity Toys. Dressed in a Jason Wu original creation, this totally groovy doll was available in two color variations and comes boxed in Jason Wu's signature packaging. The legendary collection uses previous much-loved editions of Poppy Parker as reference points. Lovely and Lilac is inspired by an early Poppy Parker doll, Lilac Frost. Commanding attention references the highly sought-after center of attention doll. When the Poppy Parker doll was initially in development, various potential names were under consideration. These included, Hilary Hartley, Cherie Clark, Sharon Shelby, Tabitha Tilly, and Trixie Taylor. Clearly alliteration is everything, but now it's hard to imagine our favorite 60s teen fashion model as anything other than Miss Parker. Dazzling Debut a mashup of reluctant debutante with some mod styling. The little dress with the embroidery is based on a Pierre Cardin original as worn by Mia Farrow. Black tie. This is an update of Portrait in Black, with a hairstyle similar to Springtime in Paris. Totally channeling Priscilla Presley. Party in the Hamptons is a clear reference to the desirable holiday in the Hamptons doll.
Sugar and Spice Poppy has been over the moon since she was cast in a fun history of fashion pictorial called Sugar and Spice, for Mod Miss magazine. Six top teen models were chosen to represent each decade of the century, and Poppy was selected to wear fashions from the 50s. Poppy was much more comfortable creating her good girl look, but she did a great job with the saucier look as well. Everyone agreed that her pictures were the perfect combination of sugar and spice, and everything nice. Poppy Parker is in Palm Springs at one of the poshest events of the year, the Pink Lemonade Social. Not only is Poppy attending, but as a favor of the hostess, local fashion designer Lovey Lowell, she is modeling a custom ensemble made just for the occasion. With her wide-brimmed pink hat and bold lemon print dress, all eyes will be on Poppy. She's the pink of perfection. Full of wholesome charm and 1960s-inspired teenage glamour, Poppy Parker Beach Babe is the doll of the hour, just waiting to come join your collection and try on all her favorite groovy outfits. Jilly's is the swankiest nightclub in Palm Springs. Poppy's publicist just called and told her that young singing sensation, Bobby Bertino, is there, and wants to get his picture with her. Poppy had heard that the desert can get cool after dark, so she slipped into an eye-catching outfit, teamed with a pink faux fur coat, and dashed out to meet one of her favorite stars. What a glamorous desert dazzler! Poppy can't wait to check out the sights of Palm Springs, starting with exploring the grounds of the Palmer Hotel, where she is staying. Ice bucket in hand, she strolls down to the pool, hoping to spot some movie stars, but everyone there seems to think that she's the most camera-ready person at the resort. Palm Springs became popular with movie stars in the 1930s. Modernist architects flourished, designing unique vacation houses with commissions from the stars. These were often glass and steel homes in boulder strewn landscapes. In 1946, Richard Neutra designed the Kaufman Desert House, a modernist classic. The 2021 Obsession Convention featured Poppy Parker as the Style Lab doll. What a lot of mix and match options for conventioneers. As a bonus, Poppy's frenemy, the delectable Ginger Gilroy, joined the lineup. There were even some groovy accessory packs available. Poppy had previously featured as a style lab doll at the 2019 convention, FW19. The wildly successful She's a Real Doll line used the conceit that a doll manufacturer had reimagined a real-life Poppy Parker teen model, as a range of fashion dolls. There were six basic dolls in the series, presented in pale pink Helenka swimsuits. Additionally, six fashion packs were made, to capture the spirit of the 1960s. For the 2021 Obsession Convention, the theme for the Style Lab collection was an obsession with Parisian fashion, during the early 1970s. This was reflected in the packaging, reminiscent of 70s Yves Saint Laurent cosmetics and perfume boxes. The Style Lab fashions clearly reference the designer as well. In particular his 1971 Spring-Summer Haute Couture collection, which featured elements of 1940s styling, bold square-cut fur jackets over short dresses, midi lengths, and knee-high boots, as well as his designs for Catherine Deneuve, in the movie Belle du Jour. Later on YSL introduced some of these styles into his off-the-peg line, Reeve Gauche. Nowadays it's commonplace to reference other sources as inspiration, in both fashion and contemporary art. Saint Laurent was one of the first to mine the gallery for the runway. In the 1960s and 70s, his runway looks were inspired by Andy Warhol, Van Gogh, and Georges Brock. His 1965 Mondrian collection is one of the most memorable, the six shift mini dresses in the collection captured the modernist spirit of a generation. A wedding trousseau was modeled at the convention. The bridal gown, 
a key look from any runway collection, was shown alongside a saucy boudoir outfit, ideal for bedroom adventures, as well as a party dress that looks like it came straight from the ateliers of Paris. This was the first time that Ginger Gilroy appeared with blonde hair, albeit strawberry blonde. The saucy negligee is reminiscent of a YSL outfit worn in the 1969 movie, Mississippi Mermaid. Silver soiree features a 1970s fashion-forward detail, with a paper sack waistline. Not everyone can carry this look off, but luckily Poppy, with her tiny hourglass waist, does it with some panache. Finally, here's a sneaky glimpse at what's coming up for Poppy Parker in 2022. She is moving firmly into the 1970s, with a hairstyle that Cher would have been proud of. Poppy Parker Loves Mystery Date is a series of two doll gift sets with a twist. The theme is based on Hasbro's classic board game, from the 1960s, Mystery Date. The dolls and graphics are inspired by the artwork and visuals of this game. Join fashionable 1960s teen fashion model, Poppy Parker, as she gets ready for her date, then see who's knocking at the door. Is it the date she's expecting? Or is it the stud, a ruggedly handsome surprise? Only one way to find out. Open the door. With each set in this series, the Poppy Parker doll is guaranteed, but here's the twist, there's a 1 in 16 chance of finding the stud, instead of the expected date behind the door. First, the boys. Bellamy Blue is Poppy's ski date. He's a fully articulated fashion figure with black flocked hair, wearing a 60s on trend ski outfit, he's ready for the slopes. Poppy's bowling date partner is Cabot Clark. This hunk has dark auburn hair, and wears a bowling outfit complete with carrying bag and ball. Chip Farnsworth is Poppy's formal dance date, dressed to the nines in his perfectly proper dinner jacket, ready to take our star to a formal dance. Milo Montez is Poppy's beach date, with sand blonde hair, he's totally in style with his Hawaiian shirt and shorts. Kieran Morell is the stud, he was actually known as the dud in the board game. But this guy is no runner-up. With jet black hair, he's all ready to get down and dirty in his mechanics pants, with tank top, construction boots and handy wrench. Formal dance date Poppy wears a romantic hot pink ball gown, accessorized with a faux fur wrap, jewelry, corsage, and purse. Naturally, she has matching satin shoes. Bowling date Poppy is demurely sweet in her sweater and skirt combo, offset with a purple neckerchief, cute white bobby socks, and of course, her bowling ball with carrying bag. Ski date Poppy sports a totally scrumptious retro snow outfit of bright chartreuse stretch pants, an aqua turtleneck, and an adorable snow jacket with faux fur trim. She's complete with her skis with functional metal bindings. For her beach date, Poppy has chosen a colorful striped bikini, teamed with a terry cloth cover-up, and a big straw hat to protect the complexion. And no trip to the beach is complete without a transistor radio.
so, that's it. A pretty comprehensive overview of Poppy and her friends. We hope you've enjoyed our little movie. Stay tuned to the Bold Doll channel to see what's coming up next for Ms. Parker.